Well, good good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, this is the little uh, device I use, so I don't have to move the camera. Um, if you've not seen it before, but um, it's a little mirror. Uh, but nice to see you. Thanks for coming. We're going to be doing the next bit of the painting I started last week of the train station. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I'll just get on, <laughs> just try to direct this right position. But um, yes, you can you can get a bit of a look at my my shelves there and other paintings on the wall. But uh, yes, I'll move that um, and. We've got uh, a painting to get started on, or get started on the next bit of. This uh, This is all dried since last time. Um, if you remember, I um, had the th quite thick chunks of oil paint. It's dry to the touch, but it will be six months, excuse me, six months before it's properly dry and varnishable. Uh, right, now it's a case of uh, having a look at the reference, let's pull it out, reference as usual. Um, I think I'm going to start with a bit of detail on the figures and so you can get the most detailed um, look at this picture. It's fastened to a board on the wall, by the way. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick it onto this board. Um, and that is, yeah, that's a drawing I did, if you didn't see last week's, that, that's a drawing that was from a little while ago, it's from a couple of years ago actually, at the local train station. Um, and uh, now I've got something to work from to give me ideas for the next move along um, for whatever detail I'm going to add in these figures. Um, I'm going to start with a bit of pencil because it sort of feels, I, I tend to go with how I'm, how I'm feeling on the day. I'll sort of, it feels right to start with a bit of pencil today for this this figure anyway. This one's the one that's taken my interest first. Um, so I'm going to just uh, try and carve him out a bit more of a face. I think it's, I think it's a male. But uh, my drawing doesn't really um, betray too much. Either way, really. I th could be an older woman, I suppose. But as they go on, it can it can sort of change for me, and I'll uh, change the change the figure as the as it carries on. Which is very nice. It's nice to be flexible. Now, what I would quite like to do is make, I think these figures to be darker in the, um, these figures are the darkest thing in this, in this drawing. Um, and this is a photocopy of a, of a drawing I made so I can keep the sketch, um, or the original in the sketchbook and, uh, the options open to frame it in the future. Now I'm going to, Flick over from the pencil because I'm, I'm slightly um, limited in what I can do with that pencil. Now let me, I'm just going to dunk into, I need to squirt a bit more red paint into my, into my palette. Um, it's kind of You wonder what uh, what you're going to need when you start. You only really need you only really find that out when you get started, and it's a, it's a practical sort of practical process. Now I've got several pots down down here. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll move the camera in just because I can put it back. I'll show you my working area. It's uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm using. Classic pesto, of course. Um, absolutely delicious. These jars are very good. They're slim line. They contain a good amount of uh, spirits and um, completely fresh, clean palate there. 
um, which is unbelievable. Um, and uh, yes, brushes, various things, the paints just there. That's where I'll sort of duck down to when I need some more paint. Now the camera can pop back here. So I have a picture on a sort of fixed place where, where it will be best for the camera. Now, um, it's, uh, it's choices really. I never have a plan uh, to much of a degree. Um, there's no actual drawing to be done this week. Last week I was actually mapping it all out with um, with pencil, doing the site sizing. And that was, um, you can see all the lines still. If you didn't see it last week, um, all these lines are my system for transferring the figure from I just needed to enlarge it slightly from from what you can see above only slightly um, but I was able to do it with through the through the camera showing you exactly how I do it which is not something I've been able to do before because of the size of this picture it's quite a convenient size to do a um, do an online demonstration of uh, kind of. I'm looking for. I've got to keep my eye on these um, the limbs of the person. I've got sort of a, a pot. I've been using a white um, white oil paint, um, titanium white, and it's also sort of dunking my brush into a dirty solvent. Um, the zest it solvent or um, the kind that's made from orange orange citrus or citrus it's very good it lets you you can breathe and even the low odor thinners um, I've said it before but it's it's wonderful for painting inside because you don't have to worry about the thinners or terps knackering you breathing and getting in your throat, giving you a headache. You don't have to open any windows when it's colder. Now these, I'm trying to get the kind of, it's a, it's using all these marks I'd made in pencil a while ago as gui a guide for what I need to do next with the paint. And I can kind of build up a as I was doing with the with the kind of white first layer last week, it's building up the limbs. As a as a sort of uh, low relief sculpture. In a way, if I feel like if I feel like doing that, the options are open for me, really, and it's very nice to um, ride along with how I'm with whims as I'm going along now this is some dirty some some of the dirty solvent I'm just putting that on top of the uh, touch dried white paint from last time and that is a kind of starting a way to get started really it shows up all those um, nice um, crusts and variations in the paint where it's where it's fallen and it's gone to the board the board is primed with a very thin layer of white acrylic just so the paint has something to sit on top of yes that's what if you've not if you've not uh, come across the phrase priming before it's well it's, it's what you do with your same as when you paint your wall so the paint doesn't soak in because this um this MDF board is like sort of Weetabix. It soaks up if you don't put something on for the that's a hard layer. You don't have anything for the paint to sit on. This is now bleeding into the other figure. I like all this paint running down. It kind of it makes you think, oh no, it's going, it's going to cover up parts of it. But when you've got 
and you've got this thinned thinned kind of dirty solvent um, you have eventually a transparent um, layer when it when it's fully run down and you also get the artifact of the running down paint which I think gives the figures a sort of grounding sort of organic rooting into the into the canvas or the, the surface now that is um, it's really comparing the other figures now, keeping an eye on, I think I like the idea of a bit of red on this face. Well, a, a tiny little bit more red into what I was using. Now that has completely covered that, so that's um, going to need some slight adjustment, I think. I'm going to use a bit of a old cotton bud to kind of take a bit of that away. That one's a bit too dried out, so I'll use a fresher one. Now parts of this paint can kind of be removed in places. Um, and you have faces kind of building themselves up in spite of in spite of me in a way they'll they'll come forward the more i do on the the more i do on the painting and it's quite a nice thing to watch uh, as far as i'm concerned because you it's a picture being being made half by me and half by the paint uh, doing doing what it wants really now I'm gonna be a bit random with this this part because this this figure is a little bit more aloof it's apart from those figures so I've got to ride along with what marks of I made last week and this this feel like they're flying upwards and um, the the figure is uh, you could you could use this as a, a metaphor for the idea that visual metaphor for the figure thinking introspectively the um, wisps of thought going upwards or it could be a cold day um, it, it's nice to leave it if you can find visual metaphors that could also be something physical uh, in the in the world around then you you're into the territory of um it's more more of a poetic i idea and you're constructing the picture and it can really get quite you can find a really emotional face after a while um this this blobby blobby crusty chunk could become quite a few things it could and with it being quite small um like that's the actual size there's my real finger um you've got options to give it give it it could it could have a kind of um in the in the picture up there it's got um sort of um, a f sort of a face. Well, the camera's refocused now. You can see it a bit quick. You can see it a bit better now. But at this stage, it's um, the the chunky marks, really. And I can I can think um, I can do so much until this this layer of paint dries, and then I'll need to come back to it. So in that way, doing doing these demonstrations on a week weekly is um is quite um quite convenient and this this section um these lines also can act as um they they are good for the drawing but when the painting 
is going on. I can think of them as um, areas where I need to work in and it helps me to think my way through how the picture's going to be constructed. I think I would like that sitting figure a bit darker. Excuse me, I'll just uh, squirt a bit more um, burnt, um, burnt umber into my into the palette. Um, I'll show you, take you down again just to the palette and uh, show you the, yes, that's the, this is the little area I'm sort of I'm mixing the paint in, uh, in this part and the, um, I only ever need little bits of the actual highly coloured paint. I've got a huge load of white there. Shift my chair out of the way. Um, huge load of white to go into. White's the kind of basis for these these current pictures, and then they get a bit of colour added. So for that reason, I've got these tubes of paint. I only ever use tiny little squirts of the colour or the brighter colour. back. Sip of coffee to be going on with. Ah. Right. I need to because every figure's different, everyone each one has to um be be made it would be better if they were all done with a slightly varied colour. If they're all going to be a dark, if they're all going to be a sort of dark brown, eventually, one needs a tiny little bit more blue than another because you need you need to be able to discern that they're different people. They're not in uniforms. They're they're all wearing their own clothes. Usually be that red, a touch of red will give a bit of warmth and life to something. Um, in some pictures where you've got, where you actually want it to look colder, you can deliberately not use any red. All this, um, it's kind of wet. Wet paint, and it's um, I'm allowing it to run down. Yeah, so I'll use a bit of. Um, I might want to do a, a darker in this hair, but I've just popped a little bit, a little tiny bit more blue in, so it's different to that color. And we've got different materials. And these are sort of the base colors and big chunky marks. So the final final contrast between the marks I can think um, will come later to some amount but I can start things off with um, by sort of fiddling about with a pencil over over wet paint here and cotton bud again I'm just going to take away some of that sort of you can see it's um up here is sort of rag, raggedy-ish hair now where you get that smudge that um contrasts nicely i think with the paint and the paint begins to look more like um skin really skin and clothes and folds of <laughs> the idea of a person so not, not, I'm not in the business of, I'm not wanting to depict everything so that you'll necessarily recognise what it is. It's, it's an impression of my reaction to it. And that's far more interesting as far as I'm concerned than trying to execute a picture where everything is perfectly painted. That doesn't mean to say that the drawing um, shouldn't be 
accurate. It's two two different things: accurate drawing and excuse me, um, accurate drawing and technique of painting or technique of drawing. Now, with that hair, it contrasts with that face there. I, I the marks I'd made last week with with the white paint. And now they're sort of suggesting a face, sort of skeletal structure underneath. And that person certainly looks scarier than that one above. Um, I might need to dry for a while. I'm going to go on to the ones over on the left hand side. Bring the um, painting, painting stick up so I can lean on it. It's a bit easier. And it means I don't have to lean onto what I've already done. Um, if it works for the picture, you can actually start. You can plan to start on the left-hand side, but it's not. It's not been the, the most interesting part to me on this on this picture. I want I want to start with a main. It's a main character in a way, the one that takes my, one that takes the interest first. So. I've got to start where my um, instincts tell me to start. And I'm just really going. I'm picking out the dark, the dark parts on this on this figure above. Um, and uh, I had prepared for. I prepared the white paint last week, and it has dried in a kind of. Um, touch dried in, a, in the arm shape so that's given me something to run along with that is a kind of three-dimensional relief arm moving down and I can use that to my advantage and to sort of boost these boost these marks and the tones I'm, I'm putting down this bit more planning i've i've used this method quite a lot with you stick down thick paint and then paint on top of it and you can do that with acrylic um if you're using oils you need to put all your all any acrylic you're going to use that needs to go down first and then um any oil paint on on the top oil will sit on top of acrylic but not the other way around and the acrylic all needs to be dry before you paint onto it with oils as well now this is he's looking a bit simplistic in a way it's um i'm wanting more pull this paint down with the this little cotton bud and it's going to start to clatter against all the dry white paint which is very nice I can sort of remove this is still I'm still drawing from what I can see up there it's drawing is the act of observation and making marks and that can be using anything You can do it with um if you're caught um with it with your sketchbook out and about if you've got a cup of coffee and you've you haven't bought any paints with you but you've got a pencil you can uh or you've forgotten your pencil even you can dip your finger in your coffee and start painting with it now, let's get some actual new wet white on this cotton bud and see what happens this sort of half um process of experimentation for my pictures and this is this isn't a demonstration picture it's a real painting um i apologize the <laughs> i said last week the other paintings will be going on in the next few days i've got i've got three or four looking at me that aren't on the website oh no there's two new finished ones that i've got a got to put on 
just uh, I'll just take you up here and show you them. There they are. Look for a, a sneak peek. Uh, I've I've photographed them, but they've got to go uh, on the website next. There's two painting sections in the website. Um, there's this subsection called two of two and one of two. One of two are the newer ones like this. But, um, all right, so we'll just have a little look from look from far away. Uh, coming along. Um, right, so uh, carry along. These two on the left, I think. I, so, I tend to flit about with these figures, um, or with any objects in the picture. I'll do a, a bit on one part and then then do a bit on the other. I, w I won't think that's one section and that's I've got to finish it um, until I'm. I've got to finish it before I move on to the next part. That's not how I. I can. I don't like to do things like that. I sort of need to be checking everything as I go along. <clears throat> a bit like having a lot of little pans going on the on the stove. Like you're doing lots of little sauces. One needs something adding at one time. Another might be another might be ready. So you've got to keep an eye on where on what's going on. That's why it's really quite it's tiring painting and drawing. That's where the that's where the um, exhausting factor comes in. You've got to. Keep observing all the time. And you can choose really. There, there are many different types of artists and some would choose to really make. They use a lot of, I've heard some people use sort of sports metaphors for painting. I don't like to think of it like that. It's not, it's not a race and it's, <laughs> It might be a competition uh, if you're trying to um, get people to buy the pictures, but while you're doing them, you need to actually, you need to be pleasing yourself first. It's your picture. Now that has got a bit of a bit too much, I think. All these, all these little rubbings out. I like to, they they can stay if they want to, if they look good, um, if they can um, work with all the other marks. Then little rubbings out, you can have as a part of the picture in the end, and they lend it a used quality. Which adds certainly to the the organic. Uh, elements and also the if you if you've got we're going to be doing these these things that they're sitting on the kind of the long green benches at Beeston Station and they are ravaged by the weather although the paint is very Quite hard wearing, it seems. So it's a so it's a process of putting things on and taking thing and <laughs> taking them off slightly to build up something interesting, something with multi layers. Now these two figures I've been. I'm actually breaking my rules and not using slightly different colours. I'll get a little bit, of, a tiny bit more yellow into this. It's so subtle you probably won't see it on the camera. But, um, just for the clothes here, it's 
very slight difference. I know it's it's a pretty monotone um, picture so far. But if you can keep the colours low, keep the volume on the colours low, then you can uh, make tiny adjustments later. Now let's go over and thin that down a bit and with a bit of white and let's that let's have that running sort of in between and over what I've been putting down. Give it some contrast to the, the whiter background. Already got a sort of shoe in pencil drawn there. That leg. I want to make that a different leg, so. I just thinned it slightly, but I'm not sure that really matters because you've got quite a crust on there. Um, that's. Tiny bit of cooler colour. What we can do is, if you know that you can choose where the brighter colours are going to be, and relatively brighter, that is probably the brightest colour in it at the moment, with a hint of red. Um, if, I mean, these figures are pretty much all sitting on the bench without any perspective those aren't they're not really very much smaller than those just a tiny bit but it doesn't really matter that they're all in the same all in the same uh, on the same line so but when if you know that you want to actually boost the perspective you can have the brightest color um closest to on the on the closest person and um, if there was someone standing right in the foreground to make them come forward the brightest color goes on them and the dullest color right at the back now then this fig yes this a bit more blue in now no, that's a bit too harsh. I've probably got enough to be going on with. Just the tiniest little bit of blue over this arm. I do want the crusts of the arm to carry on showing through. So I don't want to go over that too much. But I do want to give the body some mass. I don't, I don't want to lose the description I already put into that arm last last week with the crusty paint. In this drawing, I've used a variation of pencil marks. Um, sip of water, excuse me. Yes, the pencil marks are kind of, um, you can have, press harder and you get, with a 2B pencil, uh, you can fiddle about with quite fine, with a fine sort of um, cluster of marks going in one direction, a sort of beard-like, I suppose. And then and then these ones going in definite, for the, for the front of the body, definite downward strokes so I can try and mimic that um, just to get the feeling of the direction of the clothes but this needs to not happen on another bit of the of the body unless it's this same material and choosing where to put different types of material which means let's use a different type of mark 
It's, sounds quite a simplistic idea, but you've really got to be strict with where you use where you use different s strokes or shapes of paint. If you look around you now, probably just next to, if you're watching it on a computer or a phone, it's sort of just next to you, there's your hand. You can hold your hand up to the phone and uh, compare how the light is being ref sh thrown back to your eye, um, depending on the material that you've got in front of you and the shiny phone screen corner that I can see now um, in comparison to my hand is, um, well, you can see it there. It's just the, the shininess of that um, mirror plate next to my hand. That mirror plate is throwing the light back really quite harshly. It's throwing it back better than that finger. And it's just a contrast of um, the way that the light is doing that. So it's creating a different texture. If you can think of it as textures, then how do we translate that into paint or pencil? Um, and it's just to achieve a contrast of marks, so that all those, so that these figures just don't look all the, all the same. If you paint them all the same, they're going to be a kind of um, it's going to translate as skin everywhere. If you do the face in the same type of marks, type of paint. So you've got to think direction of the brush movement, um, size of the brush, um, size, or maybe not even use a brush for everything. The brushes are essential, but so is, so is getting a, getting a contrast. So we've got things like, um, Things like a little palette knife. Um, so let me use that. Hmm. I think I, I like the idea of more. Just switch over brush to from the. I was using a long, using a long rigger rigger brush for those fine details, but I've got a sort of um, round end brush for. Um, bigger air, bigger areas. That that is a darkerish area. Some of these can be. If you can think, I can I can take pieces of this away later, maybe even immediately. If I get some put clearer solvent running down. And with solvent, it's just the same. You can think of it in the same way as water. If you've ever done, if you've not done much painting, it's it's more likely you've done watercolors and um, solvent is. You can just think of it as the water. It's just the oil paint takes longer to dry. So just a little bit, you can, I mean, every way of, every method of painting has its own, um, uh, has different challenge, different uh, challenges because it behaves differently. But it's basically, uh, a, nice, a nice way to think of it is it's the same pigments with a different gunk holding it together. Uh, and the first years ago, the first gunk that was available or the most the most famous one is the oil paints um, usually you often held together by uh, something like linseed oil but I've got a pot of that and I can actually I can add more of that to the paint um, that's what it looks like um, I can add more of that to the paint to give it a sh give it a shine or to stop it drying 
um, as quickly, although it takes about three days to become touch draw. Um, and then other gunk, a new, the newest gunk is acrylic. And it's just basically it's plastic. So it's the same, it's just a different uh, suspension. That's the technical word. Now then, they're, they're building up. I'm pleased with the way they're building up. And when they're all before you start, it's, it can be quite. It's, it's a bit like getting to know people. I've been researching these characters um, as I've been doing this and looking at the paint, looking at the drawing above and thinking, like, how can these people convincingly sit in a train station? And that's the, that's the story of this picture. They're sitting there waiting. Um, what what should they not be doing um, and I'm trying to work out what is appropriate for them to be doing sitting there with a looking at the clock they're not looking at each other that's an important factor they're minding their own business Sound a bit more dark. I want to get this person's hair. I think it looks like sort of Mohican, really. And that's going to give he or she. I haven't decided whether this one's a man or a woman. I'm not sure it matters. I think often it's more interesting if they're a bit. Um, You can if you can give it to the viewer um if you can give the choice to the viewer of how to interpret it it's just more interesting all round you're not necessarily spoon feeding uh, the viewer and especially for a small picture like this where you're not necessarily going to have much detail or detail, you can translate that into explanation. And what I've been trying to do is explain in a visual language what is happening with these people. And you can explain in broad terms or go into fine detail. And how these pictures usually go is I will have these broad marks and then within the areas I want to explain further a great deal more explanation and usually that with a person that's in the, in the face because that's where everybody's looking for for explanation of everyone's looking consciously anyway for an explanation of the person's personality but might not all be in the face when you're in you're in sort of you've got a world that you're trying to um not dominate but um you need to be you need to take into consideration if you're trying to um create it these these are real i want these to be functioning uh ideas of people and they should have qualities that that um, I think that that are appropriate for the whole for the whole figure. So if their excuse me, if their face is done, if their face is say pulling down with every mark and their body should go right along with that and if I see so now that is developing into something quite a lot different to that now but I'm I'm pleased with how this is going and that looks a bit skeletal and that's not really appropriate I don't think uh, 
to keep, but it's the underpinning of the face. Um, and that can that can help me later. It can be an, that's the layer underneath the next layer. This person has a kind of darker ear, yeah, so that will give the face a little bit more explanation. Oh, another sip of coffee. Oh, I do find this painting and the smell of. So this, the smell of coffee, almost more than the taste of it, goes along with the idea of of uh, these pi these pictures. Often I'll use. I I think if I've got a favourite colour, it's it's a sort of this dull brown, burnt umber. I suppose. Is that it's so useful. <laughs> favorite color it's I don't like uh, I don't like bright garish colors usually they they give me a bit of a when you when you're trying to when you're in the business of finding visual metaphors for people and reality then bright color translates as loud sound or someone shouting at you and that is uh, not a welcome <laughs> it's not a welcome thing if you want if you want a certain my my drawings are always uh, they they're made without the without the people I'm drawing knowing that I'm drawing them they they look nothing like the people that were there, and often they are pit, they are made up of several people in one figure, because someone moves, then someone else sits down, so one's got one torso, one person's torso, and then the other's got some the the other's legs. But they do need that that hopefully kind of visual diary for or quite ordinary situations like sitting in cafes and at stations and pubs and libraries or more I've been doing one where there's some runners actually lately I'll just uh, pick up the camera again and show you this one uh, the um, the turkey trot run around Keyworth. Um, sort of that's that's at the s sort of mid stage as well. Quite like that as it is, but it's um, quite quickly moving figures. And the the movement can unless I keep. Uh, that was the drawing that I did um, last Christmas, and it was um, or close to Christmas. But I, I, you've got to keep the direction of the paint moving appropriately for each runner. Now these people, by contrast, they're very much rooted to the spot, so they need almost to be knitted into the knitted into the seating and this uh this kind this is the kind of idea that i'm i'm wanting to wanted to give them a kind of organic feeling and you can ride along with <coughs> excuse me things like this and think of them as trees almost and think well they can they can grow out of this surface um, now then, and 
So that, with that in mind, I'm going to sort of put start to work on this base area. Uh, just it would be nice to get that quite. I think I think dark at the bottom is a nice idea, and then working up to light. And it's the sort of old, so the the idea of there's the ground and then moving up to the brighter sky, like the brown mud, white, and blue sky. And that will give the, the figures are kind of enclosed in the station. And then... Uh, Let's just remove this temporarily because we're going to have that. That's the top of the, that's the very top of the picture. So most of this structure, you could think of it as a, so you could start to think of it as a cage and use it. You know, I can use it to the my advantage. Now I'll listen to myself speaking when. And I've been doing these. It, it sounds as though uh, it must sound that I like I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm sort of fiddling about until something happens. And that's a, I I do have an idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but it's that that's my that's the extent of my plan is to fiddle about until I like it, using what practice that I have given myself in my sketchbooks and doing other pictures. So I can I can allow parts of the parts of the um, practice to become unconscious, I suppose. Well that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. And in that way, it certainly helps to be talking um, while I do this. Because otherwise, I would have um, possibly some music on and be singing <laughs> along with it. Um, but I can actually map. This forces me to th to make decisions, and it certainly it galvanizes me into action. And these darker areas are sort of they they contain these people they're keeping them rooted down and this this line is that could be the extent of the description I do on this bench thing um because it's just a it's a platform for these people to be on uh, but it shouldn't take them over visually it should be fairly simple now you can use this is a this is basically thinned, dirty solvent it, with um, a bit of burnt umber in. Sort of, uh, sort of what I clean the brushes in, but it's also what I do the pictures in. And it, it's um, that's why I've got so many jars because they they sort of tend to go. That one is a kind of sienna. One's white, one's sienna, and um, it's down here. One, yeah sort of white solvents with these you know, permanent permanent knackered up brushes in sometimes I will need them to do big areas these are sort of older brushes that I, I'm afraid I haven't taken very good care of those um, they do take a lot of cleaning brushes I'm not, I'm not great at cleaning brushes Rigorously. Now that, yeah, it's um, sort of white, sienna-ish, kind of like um, uh, brighter brown, more umbery brown, blue brown, and uh, that's a clearer one. But they they work in terms of um, how I'm feeling as well, or how many jars I've got on the go. I might have more or less. One day. Now that brown is sort of taking over a bit, so I, I like prefer the idea of that being a little bit more 
this this part I've just put down. It's a, I need that to be a bit more uneventful. I don't want to. I don't want to get that same texture of the thick paint though. So let's just try. Yeah, it's that that texture is person and clothes and if that happens anywhere else it's going to muddle things up um, you know, this is probably all soaked into the board so that is a bit useless but it can be taken away in part um, This is just um, a cloth or something. It's nice to be able to wipe the. If you wipe the paint in a certain direction, then gives it a feeling of movement and almost. It can be could be the wind um, moving through the station. Gonna have a quick look at your I was just looking at uh, whether anyone's left a comment and Sheila has. Good morning Sheila. Nice nice to see you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for everyone else to watch for watching as well. And these sections can be thought I can be thought of in be thinking of them in sections as we go on and this is more like watercolour painting really with thin down paint and then an area like that where I've painted already I can sort of destroy slightly and with with the thinned solvent so it becomes less of a structure or a structure that once was in a way And these columns and let's run over what I did before but that will that will come through again um, the the detail before I'm gonna try just blowing on it to see what happens <sighs> pushed a bit of the darker solvent over back over the top of it I like that face starting to come through. Now these these tiny little pieces. I'll move you very much closer. That that these tiny little pieces within the paint can be filled in eventually. Um, if I choose to, it's sort of leave, leaving everything, leaving everything open for, for me to adjust. And also, I'm going to let a bit run down over this, this figure. As it as it travels down, it destroys what's happened, and then. Allows it to re it regroups the paint paint in the face area. Anyway, if I've done a lot of I've done a lot of detailed work, it won't totally destroy because it's such a gentle movement of the the paint. Just the solvent just runs down. It won't totally destroy what I've done, but it will knacker it in some way. <laughs> Best best word I can think of at the moment. A, fa a favourite of mine. Knack it up. You can see these are our areas. Um, I shall finish up in a moment, but uh, for this session, uh, but areas to look at next time are these legs. Um, I want more description on 
on those legs. You can't tell what's going on. Um, and probably more description on those faces. And let's just have a look at the look at it as it as it is. And they definitely jump. They jumping at them more in a um, within an environment. Those figures now. I think, but still, still a fair amount to do of the explanation. Um, but that's been yeah, that's been an hour. It's really flown by. I shall bring my bring my little mirror up to speak to you again. Lean on there because it's a bit it's a bit more stable. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I shall plan to do another uh, the next part of this painting next week. Um, uh, and I shall put it on there as a as an event again. But uh, thank you, thank you for watching, and uh, take care. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.